Hello and welcome to the CRM Zen Show where we talk about all things Zoho. This is episode 246, The Perfect Place to Begin, recorded on Friday, April 14th, 2023 from Zenata Consulting. I'm Brett Martin. And I'm Tyler Colt and let's get right on into the show. Yes, we shall. Get your taxes done, Tyler. Taxes, yep. Well, I get, actually got, got mine done right? a couple weeks back. It was early, early this year. Yeah, I got mine done uh, last week. <laughs> and he's still got questions, so I'm hoping, you know. Um, I don't know. I think you got till the 16th now, right? Till Monday? Isn't that the new deadline? I'm not sure. I'm not sure. Something like that. It's always better to be a little early than a little late. It is. It is. Especially since they got $80 billion dedicated to new agents auditing people. So, you know, that's just... Don't give them a reason. No, no. <laughs> All right, man. With that, uh, let's get on to announcements and events. All right, our first announcement, our taxes are coming up, so be sure to get those done and in. Uh, actually, if you head on over to Club Zanata, club.zanata.com, that is where we, that's our community. You can ask questions about Zoho. You can interact with other great Zoho users. Um, just uh, love this community. But we've also moved all our events over there. And so we are keeping track of all the events in the world of Zoho, not just ours, but all those that Zoho does. Any other partner, man, if you're doing something in Zoho, we've got it here. Uh, from the homepage, you can see all the events on the side. This kind of blends them all in together, gives you the most five recent ones coming up. Zoho has got a lot of stuff going. Um, they really cranked it up lately. And on April 18th, we are doing our Zoho social full product overview. So that should be pretty good. That's going to be you and Wayne, correct, Tyler? Yep, that is going to be me and Wayne. I think he's doing some prep today and we will uh, get ready to do that early next week. It'll be fun. I, am, I don't know what I'm going to do with all that extra time. You know, maybe I'll do some self-improvement or something. There you, you know? go. Is it, is it possible? Is there any hope? I think it'll give you some ideas. <laughs> Send me some ideas. Send me some books. I'll get some reading in. Anyway, uh, also, our, we do break down all of our events. So if you uh, on the uh, sidebar in Club Z, you can click on Zanata, and it gives you all of the stuff we've got coming up, which is pretty much a webinar. And then we've got some, uh, you know, Zoho Social or that, you know, all of our Azaz and all of our CRM. Uh, we do have a, another one, Freddie, we got to add in here. I think I sent it to you the other day. I'm actually going to... Uh, connect here with John Mark at the end of this month, somewhere in this April time frame. Um, I'm not sure when, I think it's that Thursday, maybe the 27th of April and uh, John Mark Bantock over at Z portals. And we, it's been almost a year and a half since we did the last Z wow. port. I can't believe it's been that long. So we're going to catch up on what's going on with Z portals. Uh, and if you are unfamiliar, absolutely the best software, if you want an external facing portal that connects to uh, Zoho, connects to CRM and inventory and oh, I don't know. I don't know. Is inventory in there, Tyler? Yeah, um, everything, book. everything but projects, really sign, desk, yeah. CRM, books it's and projects. Script, the way. And just, yeah, it does some great, great, great stuff. So it's kind of this all in one portal. Um, so rather than having to log into the individual Zoho portals, uh, and this also, it, it, it's a WordPress plugin and it allows you to do some really heavy theming. So anyway, they've made just a ton of changes in the last year and a half. So we're going to talk about that as well. So anyway, Club Z, it's where you get all of the latest uh, Zoho news or all of the latest events. Um, by the way, we have really, really upped our news game over at Club Z. If you click on Zoho news now, um, big shout out to, uh, the, the, the marketing team here, but, uh, what we're doing is we're kind of taking the, uh, like Zoho notebook for sprints integration. We basically take the article, drop it in a chat B GPT and say, give us a summary. <laughs> so <laughs> now you got a quick summary. You can see what it is and you can also uh, click to read the full article. So, uh, but Very we nice. do all the news, all the news we cover here on the, uh, CRM Zen show basically appears here in real time during the week. So as we get the news from Zoho, we put it over here and, uh, then we, uh, add it into the show and you get to listen to Tyler and I ramble on about it. Um, but, uh, and with that, Tyler, let's start rambling on about some news and jump on into the latest news. Hey. 
And we are going to start with Zoho Recruit. Uh, they are now introducing the required skills field for job openings. Um, this is, seems like it might be a trivial uh, little change, but it's, it's really not. So you now have this required skills field. You can go ahead and add all of the required skills you need. Um, this is though a big deal because it is replacing the skill set field. So that's mm. gone. So they pretty much had to rethink how they're doing this and how they're setting it up. So if you have reports and analytics that are using the skill set field, you're going to have to change that. If you've got rules and filters and layout rules and workflow updates, API calls, all that kind of stuff, uh, you're going to have to switch it over to this new required skills got it. field. So, um, while normally this would just be kind of a minor thing, like, hey, cool new field, it's uh, it's a little bit more than that. So if you're a Zoho Recruit user, uh, you will want to pay attention to this update. Yeah, and it looks like the values that you have in that skill set field are going to move over, but just not all yeah. the places that you might be using that field are going to automatically move over. So yeah, if you are in Recruit, definitely take a look at this article. If you want to see the full thing, like Brett mentioned, it'll be over at club.sonata.com, so you can just get right to it. Um, cause definitely worth taking a review here, right? If you're using that, you want to run through this list here in this red section and just make sure that, uh, everything's been pushed over to this new field where you need it. Yep. And in more Zoho recruit news, um, they've got all their product updates for March, 2023. So everything they did back in March, uh, you know, sometimes the when Zoho does, they do them in real time and they release them and we cover them on the show. Um, I kind of went through this and we didn't really get any of these. So you can now schedule video interviews through Google Meet and uh, Microsoft Teams. Of course, you can also do it through uh, Zoho Meetings as well. I don't know if they have do Zoom on this or not, but they've added those two oh in. Um, yeah. They've also increased the field limit on the business card view. So this is that little snapshot that you might get of a potential candidate. Um, it used to be just have a, a two or three lines. Now you have up to 10 lines or 10 fields that you can put yep. in there. So kind of giving you more data on, yeah. uh, on that from a Definitely snapshot. Definitely hope they add that to CRM as well. Limit over there is five. Would be real nice to have a 10 limit on that side of the house as well. So hopefully that trickles across the aisle there to uh, the CRM side of the house. Absolutely. Uh, and then, you know, when you're doing some synchronization with the CRM now, you can have it, uh, you know, basically skip empty fields during sync That's this is nice. very similar to what you see with books um, yeah and even when you're doing like an import to crm basically how this would work before is let's say you pushed like a job opening from crm to recruit that was already in recruit that's normally fine, but the problem is that if any fields were empty on the crm side and filled in on the recruit side it would unfill it in and recruit and set it to empty so it's basically saying just give priority to the data that's there don't replace it with anything empty Really, it's something that you should pretty much always have that on unless you don't trust the data and recruit and you want to like reset it, right? Then you can go ahead and, and disable that. Yeah. Um, looks like here as well, same thing, but for imports. So this is what we've got in CRM. Yeah. It's basically saying if something is empty in my spreadsheet and I import it to recruit, don't overwrite any data that's already in recruit. Again, pretty much would always want this checkbox to be checked yeah. unless you wanted to do a full reset. Like if your data in recruit is bad, and you know that everything in the spreadsheet is good and you only want that stuff. Um, but generally speaking, just leave these on uh, so you don't lose data as you're doing any integrations or uh, imports. Yep. All righty. And then uh, what's coming up real soon is Zoho Recruit's going to get WhatsApp integration, um, which is very big everywhere but the United States. I wish it was big here. Um, <laughs> you're going to have offers module. This is where offer letter approval and salary breakup is going to be added into it. That's pretty sweet. You're going to have a Kanban view. Um, so uh, I can't wait to uh, to see that as well. So kudos to the recruit team. Uh, great yeah, stuff nice across the board. And then, you know, it appears we can't do a show anymore without ChatGPT being mentioned uh, dozens of times. And so why <laughs> should this one be any different? Um, ChatGPT and Zoho Click, you're saying, but hey, guys, you already talked about this and you did an implementation of the week and Greg made a video on it. And, you know, yes, we did. But this is different. So basically, the implementation we've done, Tyler, is one where you actually have a bot. It sits on its own uh, tab, if you will. You can click into it and just you use write the code, right? You actually have to build the bot. 
the way we've been doing right. it. But, but this is using the standard backslash uh, implementation that you have in Click, which is you just do a backslash and you type CRM and you know then a client and you basically can pull. So if you're in Click and I wanted to say, hey, Tyler, take a look at this client, I could easily just pull it up from the CRM, hit return, he has the link to it. He can go ahead and look at it. This is the same thing. I'm in a chat with you, Tyler, and I just can go ahead and ask chat GPT for something and just go ahead and share it directly into the chat. So nice. a very, very nice bot that has been built here by Zoho. Yeah, real cool and easier to implement, right? Because it's just a bot that you can install, right? Rather yeah. than having to implement any of the code. Now there's some benefits to writing it yourself, right? Like the way that Greg wrote it, he was able to add some context so it knows who Zanata is and what we do, right? Where you might not have that same exact approach here. But the one thing I will say that's real cool with this plugin is that it's not just ChatGPT, it's Dolly as well, which for yep. uh, used for image generation. So well worth taking a look at here. If if you're interested in this stuff at all, go ahead and just install this thing. You're probably going to find more use cases for it than uh, you've ever thought you would, like uh, summarizing Zoho news articles or even naming <laughs> the CRM Zen show. The name this week, Greg, Greg normally generates our names because he's funny, but he was busy this week. So ChatGPT actually named our show. So you'll be able to find all different kinds of use cases for these bots once you uh, open the floodgates. I was unaware of that. Freddie, did you just put all of the news into ChatGPT and said, give me a show title? That's exactly what I did. And I, uh, I like that one the best. <laughs> that is crazy. And if you haven't played with Dolly, it is an image generator that is ridiculous. If you're watching us on YouTube, they put in, you know, I want photo photorealistic 4K photography of a futuristic office space. And it's, you know, they're showing three images that were generated. Um, the art that this thing can generate, that's just public domain, it's yours, use it, you know? So <laughs> I, I just, I, the things that are gonna be put out of business, right? Like all yeah. these stock photo places, you know, where oh, I oh, yeah. need stock image of this. You can just type it into Dolly and it gives you, it just generates an image and it's yours yep. to use, public domain. It, it's just absolutely amazing. So if you haven't played with that, um, say hello to our new AI overlords. You're on good terms with them, right, Tyler? Oh yeah, I always try to make sure that uh, any recorded content where we talk about AI, I like to get it on record on the internet. I support our eventual AI overlords. Uh, do not remove me in the great purge that we are headed towards. It was funny. I was talking with Wayne and he was showing me something on a screen and he goes, oh yeah, I, I had ChatGPT do this. And he goes, and I go, really? And he, he shows me in his, the way he phrased it was, good morning, ChatGPT. <laughs> <laughs> and at the end he wrote, thank you. Just making sure he is on good terms with the Only on the on good terms, just in case. <laughs> Anyway, it's got a whole bunch of message actions and a super nice bot. Uh, I haven't installed it yet. I just saw this article this morning, but uh, we definitely need to get this installed. Super cool. Super, super Absolutely. cool. Absolutely. All righty. And moving on, Tyler, this next thing we're going to talk about, I believe, I don't know, several months ago, we said, man, we never really hear about this product too much. But guess what? Connect. Um, the Connect team is alive and well and uh, has uh, given us an update of uh, what they did in Q1. Uh, one of the things they've done is they have released a starter plan. So um, basically, they've really lowered the price. If you aren't familiar with Connect, how would you describe it, Tyler? It's like an intranet. It's like a, a platform for internal communications for your company. You can use it externally with non-clients, but most of the time what we've seen is people use it internally for their tools, shared calendars, some task management, forums, QA, you know, town hall events, things like that. Yep. It's an interesting application. Most of our clients don't really go that deep with it, um, but for some people it's exactly what they need and it, it is good at what it does. Um, it's just not an area that we end up focusing on too much. Yeah, I still believe five years running um, that it has the absolute best Kanban task management boards of any Zoho product. Um, Absolutely, yeah. I mean, I've, we've said this before, I would kill for that those Kanban task boards to be migrated over to CRM or to the task app for that matter um, that Zoho has. Um, someone needs to take a look at that at Zoho because it is so good. We, when we first started, that's what we did all of our project management out of. 
because it was yep, so when it simple. Was Josh yeah. and I running things. We we basically did everything out of uh, you know Zoho Connect. Yeah. It, it, it was great. So back to their quarterly updates, then you've got uh, Microsoft Teams integration now with Connect. So that is rather nice. Um, you know, it's interesting as Zoho goes more and more into enterprise, um, you're seeing just all sorts of Microsoft integrations yeah, and, and yep. Teams being the big one. And so uh, you've got that as well. Uh, talking about tasks, uh, you now can see your uh, member stats. So how many assigned tasks do they have? How many completed? Uh, how many checklists were assigned? How many com completed? Oh, pending tasks that are open. Uh, very cool. Uh, yeah, very cool. Will, so it was one big reason we actually left Connect for task management was the reporting. This is still pretty limited. It's better than it was, um, still pretty limited. And there's no way to pull this stuff out, right, to analytics or anywhere else. It, it only lives right here in Connect, and these are the only reports you can get. Um, so good job to the Connect team for adding more. Um, it's interesting, though. It's one of those tools. I, I wonder how many updates the task management will really get in Connect you know, from here on out, just because there's so many other places to manage tasks. You know, it's uh, hopefully it doesn't die on the vine. But it does also have a, I believe in Connect, you can do a consolidated tasking, right? You can pull it in from desk and CRM, I think, and email. Kind of. Kind of. They go into their own boards. So it's not right. bad, but it's not truly consolidated. All righty, and then they've uh, updated the left side navigation menu as well. So if you're a user there, you can now, they've built in video feedback. We're seeing this in a lot of Zoho apps now uh, where you basically can just go ahead and directly start a screen record and, and uh, annotate that. So if you're doing something, I mean, that's a perfect application for an intranet if you wanted mm -hmm. to do something and share that. Uh, and you can configure a web tab to open uh, a new browser tab. So uh, that is it. So I was unaware, Todd, you're saying that there's no analytics connection to connect? Nope. Then there's no like um, API even to get those tasks out. So there's mm -hmm. really just no other way to report on the task data other than those pre-canned reports. Got it. Got it. All right. Well, anyway, kudos to the Connect team. I'm glad to see you're alive and well and making a bunch of updates. And moving right along, uh, let's uh, talk about Begin. Uh, they now have uh, made some updates to their web forms. So quickly here, if you're using Zoho CRM or Begin, you actually can create web forms in those products. You don't need Zoho forms for that. Um, most people though, if they're a Zoho one user, or if they really want to do some really nifty integration with their CRM, you will actually want to use Zoho forms because you can just do so much more with it. But for very, very simple stuff, the web forms inside of CRM are excellent. And now begin has kind of expanded that they actually had web forms that were for contacts. So you could have a web form and basically it would, uh, it would allow you to take that web form and, you know, write it to a contact. So you put it on your website, people filled it in and wrote it to a contact. They've now expanded that out to uh, both deals and companies. So nice. you now can have web forms that will write to deals and companies. Yeah, and that's, that's kind of what you need, right? I mean, if you had like a request to quote form on your website, you definitely want that to make a deal, especially with big in because everything you're doing is on the pipeline page. Right. So being able to have a form go go in, make the contact, make the company and make the deal for you is how I would imagine most people would want their forms to work within Biggin. So I'm assuming that Biggin users are pretty happy with this one as yep. it's got to be a, a, a need to have really for most Biggin forms. Yeah. Excellent stuff. And Zoho Notebook is getting yet another integration. It's now integrated into Zoho Sprints. So kudos to the Notebook team. By the way, I got asked the other day, you know, we, we mentioned, I want to say a month and a half ago, two months ago, and there was a beta that was released. Was it in Connect where, we, where that was announced? I think it was in um, Connect and we saw it in our account kind of start to pop up. Yeah. And so, but they still haven't released that to the public, which is, um, at least maybe they have, but the last, like as a couple weeks ago, they hadn't. So we probably need to check on that. But, uh, if you're unfamiliar, Zoho Notebook is a extremely nice note-taking tool. Um, 
and uh, you can share notes, collaborate on notes, work on notes, but oftentimes you'd like to attach those notes to various Zoho applications. Um, and they've slowly, that team has been working on that integration. And uh, now you can into uh, Zoho Sprints. Very nice. There you Why go. Why not? Right? Why not? All righty. And then wrapping up the news, we'll move over to campaigns. They have launched a YouTube channel. Very nice. It's interesting. I, I, it's really the people team, I think, has one, right? Or is it just their newsletter? Not many of the Zoho apps have their own kind of YouTube channel. A lot of them just roll up to the main ones. So kudos yeah, to the campaigns weird. team. I mean, you've got uh, Zoho campaigns has got one. I mean, I know Zoho one has one and CRM has one and Zoho has one. Um, but I swear they've got a few channels. Um, I don't know if you just go to Zoho in general, if you can, from their main thing. Oh, by the way, we've never discussed this, but Zoho changed their logo, but they haven't done an official announcement about it yet. Have yeah, they? I guess it's, uh, no, there hasn't been any announcement for it, but it's, it is changed. <laughs> <laughs> they have changed the logo. So it's uh, now instead of the little children's alphabet blocks, it's a, uh, four little squares and the Zoho colors that are all interconnected with the word Zoho below it very discreetly. Um, so yeah, got that going for you. Anyway, Zoho campaigns has a YouTube channel. Nice. Congrats right. to them. Wish you all the best. Hopefully our videos uh, recommend right after yours. There you go. There you go. And we have a lot of campaign videos as well. So we can talk about that later. Tyler with that, let's get on to the implementation of the week. Alrighty, so this is an implementation this week built out by Lucas, uh, one of our senior developers here at Zenata. And this implementation is all baked into Zoho CRM and it's setting a next follow-up date um, controlled with some validation rules as part of a CRM deal flow. Um, so our goal in this implementation was to automatically require the user to set a next follow-up date at all times where that stage of the deal is set to engaged. And now this could pretty easily be done um, in a more simple way, just with the layout rule, right? Where you could require that field. But we had a specific requirement in this case that that follow-up date needs to always be in the future, which makes sense, and should never be more than 45 days into the future for a deal that is engaged. And so right out of the gate, you know, the layout rule can require that that field is filled in, but it cannot validate what is put in, right? I could, I could put in a date in 1995, right? If I wanted to, um, if we're just requiring that the field is filled in. And so Lucas had the idea here to use a validation rule. Um, validation rules can be used for lots of different things. And one uh, kind of component of validation rules that I always forget is that they can actually be defined in code. So you can get really, really flexible about what you are um, validating against. And so really, if we think about this kind of 45 days in the future requirement, well, that's gonna need to take into account what the current date is. And so it kind of points us directly to using a function, right? That can kind of refer to that current date dynamically. Um, and so to do that, right, we just kind of pull up that function on a validation rule. Make sure that it's filtered only where the stage is engaged. Um, and then we're able to enforce that date being filled in, but also being filled in within our certain rule set, right? Meaning in the future and less than 45 days into the future. Um, so, you know, some of our implementations go crazy and there's, you know, multiple third party applications and crazy stuff there. This is one that's more of a point solution. Um, but it's a really nice solve for this use case because it's pretty reasonable, right? That the client wants this follow-up date within a certain period of time, right? If we set this follow-up date one year in the future for an engaged deal, they're probably not gonna be engaged that far into the future. So nice implementation here by Lucas. Again, this date can now be used to send notifications to the team, set up tasks, trigger emails out to the client, you know, really whatever you wanna do with it once it has been uh, filled in. Super nice. Very, very nice, uh, out elegant, elegant, elegant solution. One. Nice, yeah. nice, nice. <laughs> one more time, Freddie. Nice, nice, nice. There you go. That was Greg at the end of the last of Zaz episode. We kind of captured that. And I think that's going to be around for a little while. Excellent, excellent implementation. 
All right, and with that, let's head over back to Club Z and look at the code share of the week. Elizabeth Clark comes through. She is a super user over at uh, Club Z, always helpful, always engaging, and she has posted a super nice code share. So Tyler, uh, basically you're in Zoho Books and you've maybe done a deal, but you know, you have different email, different invoice templates, I guess, right? Yeah. And, uh, you know, this one is maybe for pounds, for US dollars, for euros, those kind of things. Uh, this little bit of code allows it to uh, automatically get the right template for the creation of the invoice. Yep, exactly. And so in this case, Elizabeth's use cases, you know, we've got customers that operate in three different currencies on our different invoice templates. We actually have different bank account details to send those different currencies. So it's really important that that template gets assigned properly, right? Based on the currency of that invoice or even the currency assigned to the related customer for that invoice. And so here, essentially what she is doing is kind of creating a data map of the currencies and the proper invoice template IDs, um, grabbing that currency value and then using it to determine which template ID is proper for this invoice. It looks like she set it up on a trigger in books on create of the invoice. So if somebody wanted to override it, they can, um, but that it does set that baseline just to make sure that um, you know, we're not sending out incorrect invoices. So big shout out to Elizabeth. Thank you for the code share. I know that Greg loves when you post these uh, kind of gets us off the hook for the week. Um, so keep them coming. This is a really nice one that like lots of different people would need this. Um, it doesn't even have to be two for a currency, right? Like if you had, let's say on your customer record, a customer tier and it was gold, silver, blonde or uh, bronze, you had a really fancy invoice template for the gold tier customers. You could kind of retrofit this implementation to do that same thing. Excellent, excellent stuff. Yeah, we keep offering Elizabeth a job. She keeps saying no, she's happy. I can't, don't understand these people that are happy, Tyler. You know, just <laughs> uh, just happy doing what I'm doing. Oh my gosh, what is that about? Have you found sad happiness, Tyler? Oh, uh, never. It's a never ending search for satisfaction, Brett. Well, where I get satisfaction, whenever I'm feeling down is I head over to Zanata.com and just check out what's happening over there. So let's do so right now. And uh, we have a very nice blog post that does a summary of uh, Cody's managing accounting and physical stop levels tip on with Zoho inventory that he did last week. Um, and these, you know, oftentimes we do a tip of the week to come in, you know, eight, nine, 10 minutes long. Cody's been uh, doing basically his own private webinars on Zoho inventory. Uh, and this one is uh, just excellent. And so we've got a full breakdown. If you're a person who doesn't really like to watch uh, videos, well, here you can just kind of go through and uh, read all about it. So um, really nice right up there as well. So nice job. Right? Really unclear yeah. sometimes within Zoho inventory of what exact records and transactions affect accounting and physical stock. And when does it move it to available stock? When does it move it to committed stock? What does it all mean? Right. And so I think Cody's trying to um, demystify a little bit about the back end of these applications because it's it's not always obvious what's going to happen when I receive this PO. Right when I build the PO, what, what's exactly going on behind the scenes? So, really good video. I'd recommend anyone who's using inventory take a look at that because uh, it is well worth the time just to make sure that you know what's going on behind the scenes. And if you like this video, well, let's head on over to the tip of the week. Get these segues. It's almost like we do this for a living. <laughs> So Cody has done part two coming in at 31 minutes and 49 seconds. This is the ultimate guide to configuring and optimizing inventory. So uh, already, you know, this has uh, only been out 22 hours and I, I love this. You know, we've got a reply on here. So needed. Uh, you know, he's just uh, the step by step guide to breaking the whole the whole thing down. Uh, great job, Cody. 
So, uh, you know, Absolutely. I, I guess, is it Zoho inventories just, is it is it a little dense, Tyler? Because it's an excellent product, but it seems like it really takes a lot to kind of understand it and configure yeah. it properly. It's it's very, very dense and it's very non-obvious, if that makes sense. Like what what exactly is gonna happen if I check this checkbox, right? That says consider invoices for physical stock. What does that mean if I turn that on? Right? What what is that gonna break? What is that gonna fix? What is it gonna do? Right. Like there's it's just a really non-obvious product. Once you have it set up and running, it's it's absolutely great. But um, yeah, big shout out to Cody for going through this um, this little mid-roll ad. Monday really does like advertising on our content. Shout out to Monday. They, uh, they really Monday. do. It, it's, it's very odd. It's, it's a new thing that's occurred, which is I am logged in as the administrator of our YouTube channel right now. And just a couple of weeks ago, it started showing me ads on my own videos. So I don't know if I'm getting paid for those or not, or if we're well, getting paid for them. Google, we love Google it. stock took a hit after that um, Bing demo. So they're looking to scrape up a little extra revenue, I think, for quarterlies coming up. I think Monday would be very happy to know that, you know, I was being we're watching there, that. Yeah, they're paying for that ad. Uh, but anyway, great job, Cody. And I think there's one more in the series coming, or is Indeed. this it, Freddie? Not... Uh, that's it for now. That's, that's it. it for perfect. Now. Yeah, perfect. Right. <clears throat> for now. Excellent. Excellent. So uh, great stuff. Um, all righty. And with that, Tyler, I guess we will wrap up the show. I want to thank you. Yeah, I always, so I'm always still expecting to get into our Q&A at this part of the show. And I keep forget every single week that it has moved over to Azaz. Ask Zanata anything about Zoho premieres every single Wednesday where we go through and answer pretty much all the questions across the CRM Zen show, webinars, tip videos, Club Z, really anywhere that you can ask us something, we try to do it there. But uh, yeah, I'm always still expecting that you're going to say, and let's get into our Q&A. Catch, catches me off guard every week. I have to say we've done four Azaz now. And uh, this last one was like an hour and 10 minutes or something. It was crazy. It was I mean, we have 18 questions and um, we're spending so much, you know, we're doing it. Actually, we're doing a day before we're doing the prep on the questions and then we're doing the show. So it's really turned out to be something kind of fun. Um, and yeah. I think really useful too at the end of the day. So uh, you can check that out and all the past shows and all the notes on the shows they are over on Club Zanata as well as on our YouTube channel. So you can uh, check them out both places. All right. And with that, if you would like to get a hold of us over here at Zanata, you can go to zanata.com and click on book a meeting and we will be happy to chat with you. And on the website is where you'll find complete episodes of the show, as well as show notes with links to all the stories we discussed today. Uh, if you want this news delivered to your inbox every single Monday morning, please be sure to subscribe to our newsletter. Um, and we would also appreciate if you'd subscribe to us here on YouTube, as well as your choice of podcast app. We'll see you next Friday. Take care, everybody. <laughs>